What's going on guys, this is Kazi. No, I'm just kidding, my name is Jake, but I'm super excited to be partnering with Kazi to bring you guys even more exciting tutorials. Starting now, we're gonna be covering even more topics, more local recreations, more breakdowns, all the stuff you guys love, so get excited about that. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Jake, and I'm a professional colorist based here in the US, and over the last several years, I've had the honor of working on some incredible projects with some incredible brands such as DJI, Porsche, and Adobe, as well as some of the world's most talented creators like Sam Colder, Emmett Sparling, Jacob Briglin, and many more. And in today's video, we're gonna be bringing back one of the most popular series on the channel, Grading Your Footage. And today's footage is provided by my good friends, Brady Bissett and Sarah Ann. Ever wonder how to turn your SDR grade to HDR? In addition to that, this free webinar includes proper workflow to using Hollywood's most used film print emulation, custom techniques to stress testing your LUTs, future proof LUTs for HDR and ASUS workflows, learn to balance your footage in seconds with printer lights, secrets to building an HDR ready note tree, prepping Dolby Vision trim for Netflix, pro tip when saving a power grade. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. Now you know what to do if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on Instagram so you don't miss a thing. Let's roll the intro. Now here's our shot. We're gonna go ahead and pick a hero frame. And I think right around here looks pretty good. We've got our node tree already built here. I've gone ahead and labeled everything. So let's go ahead and walk through exactly what each of these nodes is gonna be doing. And we're starting off with noise reduction as per usual. And then we have our LGG for lift gamma gain. That's gonna be any kind of balancing we need to do for the shot. And then we have a CST, which is where we'll be converting our log image here into a Cineon log film space. And then we'll go into our primaries. We'll start to do a little bit of look development, but that's gonna actually come after we set our film light right here. So as I mentioned, this is gonna be a full film print emulation. Next up in these parallel notes, I've got our windows. And the first one is just a vignette. We're gonna have a circular window there. And then we have an outside node, which will actually be inside of that window. Next up, we have two more windows. And really this is just a good template node tree. If you're going through an entire project, it's gonna make shot matching easy. It's gonna make bouncing around, knowing where everything is super easy. So I highly recommend following a structured fixed node tree as you're going through an entire project. Then after these windows here, we're gonna be finishing up using our look adjustment node, a grain node, a glow node, and then a finishing node, which is where we'll do a few final steps just to polish off the entire image and keep it looking very sharp. So first up, the boring stuff, let's go ahead and set the noise reduction. We're just gonna set this to three frames, set our luma to around 5.6. And then in our spatial threshold, we're gonna unlink the Luma and Chroma, and then take that Chroma slider, bring it up to around six or seven. Next up, we're gonna be going into our CST, and we're gonna go ahead and drag a color space transform onto this node. And then for our input gamma, like I mentioned, this was shot by Brady Bassett using the Blackmagic Pocket 4K or 6K. And so we're just gonna select the 6K right here. There's not a big difference between the 4K and the 6K. For our purposes, they're almost identical. And then our output gamma, we're not gonna use Rec. 709 or a timeline. We're actually gonna be setting it to Cineon Film Log. And you may have noticed that just put us back into that log space. And that's exactly what we need to do because our LUT here, the film LUT that's built into Resolve, they're all based around the Cineon Log film space. So instead of taking our CST and converting our camera space into a Rec. 709 space, we need to convert it to Cineon Film Log. So whenever we apply the LUT, it's applied properly and everything looks nice. So this is the step where I'll go ahead and add that LUT. Now, there's tons of great LUTs out there. The ones built into Resolve are some of my favorites just because they're accessible to everyone and you don't have to download anything additionally. It's built into the program. But if you're looking to add onto your library of film LUTs, you can check out Impulse. They make some great packages as well as Film Convert. So both are excellent options. Now here in this LUT node, we're going to right click on the contextual menu. We're going to go down to LUT, Film Looks, and let's do the D60 version of the Kodak 2383. And after applying that LUT, you see we've got proper contrast here in the image. Now I'm actually gonna hop back into the LGG node, our lift gamma gain. It's gonna be kind of our correctional node. And here I'm just gonna add a touch more contrast, not too much, just a little bit so we can get those blacks a little bit deeper. And then if you notice, we don't really have any saturation yet. I'm gonna show you a quick little trick for this. We're gonna go into our RGB mixer, take our red output, our green output, and our blue output and max them all out. And using the RGB mixer here may seem like a hack of some sort, but in all honesty, it's actually exactly the same as going into your primaries and then increasing the saturation to 100%. So you're not actually doing anything special here by maxing out the sliders. The thing is you can actually achieve some pretty interesting results if you know how these sliders work and you play around with them. So if you wanna learn more about that, let me know in the comments and we'll see about doing a video later on going deeper into this topic. All right, so also in our primaries node, this is where I like to do even more look development. So if we were to be applying this node tree to other shots in our timeline, we pretty much keep the noise reduction, CST, primaries, and LUT nodes all fixed as is. We really wouldn't be touching those. That's gonna be our main look. And then we'd be doing most of our shot matching in the LGG node. So let's go ahead and jump into our primaries node. And just using the primary wheels, 
I'm going to cool off the shadows a touch. And then because this is a nice sunset, we want to continue to push a little warmth into the midtones and maybe a little bit of green almost into the highlights or the gain here. So you see, we're not doing too much, just doing some non-destructive look development here. So I like where it's sitting now. We're gonna go ahead and lock these nodes just so we don't mess it up in future clips if we were to apply this to other clips. We're not gonna be able to affect this. So you see, if we take our offset and we bring it back, nothing's happening because we're selected on a locked node. And if you do need to make any changes, just right click it and then unclick that locked node and then you can make your changes. So now we've got a decent looking image. And at this point, we're really just looking to see how can we really make this image pop? How can we make it stand out and look different from everything else? One of my favorite tools here is the curves, especially when you delink all the channels curves. So let's delink all the RGB channels. Let's hop into the blue channel and let's just pull a little bit out of the upper range. And you see that's given us this really warm look and we'll bring a little bit back here in the midtones. And let's maybe even give a little bit more of a blue push into the shadows. It's not looking too bad. And then we'll, we'll actually add a little bit of green as well. And we're gonna need to set an anchor here. So we're gonna grab that green channel curve and hold alt. And that's gonna lock it to the original position here. Now we're just gonna grab another point down here on the green channel and just pull up a touch. Maybe come back down just a little bit and then turning this off and back on. I think I wanna kill a little bit of that blue in the shadows. And that right there might be good. All right, so now we can go ahead and continue on with the film emulation here. One of my favorite steps, we're gonna be adding our film grain. So let's scroll down here, film grain, and we're just gonna select 16 millimeter 500T. I'm gonna increase that size a little bit and increase the strength. And let's go full screen just to check it out real quick. And we can see that grain really coming through now. Now, one of the best advice I've been given when it comes to grain is that you don't want the actual grain to be sharper than your image. So using the softness slider here in the film grain OFX, we can control that and dial it in. And then we're also gonna be adjusting the sharpness of our image using one more parallel node right here. And we're gonna call this one sharpening. And that's gonna help us make sure that these two are lined up and we're operating off of the same image independently of each other. So if we were to do that sharpening in the finishing node, we would also be applying that sharpening to the grain, which we don't wanna do. We want to work on them independently. So here, let's go ahead and somewhat dial in the sharpness of our grain. We can pull the softness back because by reducing softness, we're increasing sharpening. And then on our actual image, we can definitely stand to sharpen things up a little bit. So we're just gonna go into our blur tool here and then pull down on the blur, which is gonna add sharpening. So right around 0.47, I think we're getting a pretty good match between the sharpness of the image and the grain. And then lastly, we're also gonna add a glow effect. So if you've been watching for a while, you're gonna know this trick here. We're gonna drop that glow on, bring our shine threshold all the way to zero, set the composite mode to soft light. And then one more thing we're gonna do into our qualifier, we're gonna turn off hue and saturation and only be affecting the luminance here. Now keep an eye on the scopes over here, this waveform, as we pull back our high range, we're gonna limit the glow effect to just the shadows. And you may notice we have these weird artifacts in the sky. We're gonna feather off using our high soft and that's gonna make sure we don't see any of those hard edges on our glow effect. So now we have a very nice warm glow here. And then we can actually change the color of our glow by selecting this little box here, next to colorize. And let's see if we want to add just a little bit of warmth to the actual glow here. That looks good. We could also maybe use this to bring some cool tones into our shadows. So you see if we just move this around, we're getting all kinds of different results here. Now, personally, I'm really liking this warm glow. So we're gonna save that as is. And then in our finishing node, one thing I typically like to do here is I'll use my log wheels to balance out shadows. So if I see that we had a little bit too much of that color bleeding into the shadows, I'll use the log wheels, kind of take that low range, pull it down just a bit, and then neutralize them the best I can. Now the problem with this method is that oftentimes if you're doing it on a project level, you're gonna have lots of different shades in those shadows. And so you're gonna have to do manual work on each shot to make sure that the log adjustment actually does neutralize those shadows. So an alternative method, which is probably a little bit more sloppy, is just going to the Luma versus Sat curve and then taking our black point here and desaturating the lower end of our shadows. You don't have to go all the way, but right here is pretty nice. And then you can see it's a very small change, but if you're looking at the scopes here in the bottom right hand corner, you can see a small change just where we're desaturating that lower end a little bit. So the last step here, once we've created the look, that's when I actually like to go in and add my windows. So in this one here, our main vignette window, we're definitely going to make sure we soften this off quite a bit. But one thing we want to do is just add a slight vignette here. And now we'll go ahead and invert the selection. And then we'll go back into our custom curves, select our wide channel, and just pull things down a touch. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then in our outside node, we're gonna bring up some of the uh, shadows as well. And as you can see, that lifts the lower end of our shadows just a touch too much. So we're gonna anchor those 
back down a little bit more. And now let's take a look at what this has done. And that just brings out Sarah, our subject, a little bit more. Now these windows are meant to be customized on a shot by shot basis. So you always know where to go to reset them if you need to make changes on a different shot. One other thing I'd like to do here using our windows again, we're gonna use a gradient window. And let's just add some more contrast across the screen here. We're gonna take this one, if we highlight it, we'll see where we're at, that looks pretty good. And then on the last one, we'll do the same thing from the other side of the screen. Let's just add a little bit more brightness overall coming from that left side, maintain our contrast. And then in our other window, we're gonna do the exact opposite. We're just gonna pull the shadows down a touch just to continue adding into that contrast. So let's jump back to the start and let's go through one by one and see what each of these nodes does. Obviously we start off with our noise reduction and then we had our CST, which puts our image into the Cineon film log space. And then we added our film LUT and then our saturation and our primaries to give ourselves a little bit of a look here, as well as bring some color back into the image. And then we added a touch of contrast in our LGG node. And the next up, we did a little bit of look adjustments here. We pushed a little bit of green into those upper mids. And then we added our grain, our glow, as well as our sharpening to make sure that our image sharpness matched our grain sharpness. And then lastly, we have the finishing node here, which desaturated the shadows just a little bit. And then finally, we have these three nodes here in our parallel nodes that we use to shape our image and give it a little bit more contrast overall. So let's go ahead and check out the final look. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the latest installment of grading your footage. I think these make for a great opportunity to share some fun techniques without having to dedicate the entire video to that step of the process. And if you're ready to take your color grading game to the next level, don't forget to check out the link to the free training in the description below. If you're enjoying the content and don't wanna miss out on future tutorials, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.